So let's introduce our guest for you once again. Firstly, the man who runs the Surrey Academy. He's been the Academy Director for over 17 years. And we're going to talk about first class cricket today. Here are his stats. 12 first class matches for Somerset, 440 first class runs at an average of 20.7. Some like to call him the dream maker. I like to call him Gareth Townsend. GT, take your head out of your hands. How are you, my friend? Well, uh, well, I was all right until you mentioned those stats. Why did you have to come up with them? Couldn't you have said that that were 400 wickets at 20 and made out I was a bowler? They would look decent. It was, it was tough talking. playing back then. The wickets were tough at Taunton, seemed around all over the place. Very difficult, challenging times. I'm all right, Churchy. Yeah, well, I'm all right. Well, I think an average of 20... But we'll, ask the, we'll ask the three lads what they think, you with an average of 20.7 in first-class cricket. Next is a young man... Now, Gareth tells us, listen to these stats. Next is a young man who made his... Oh, it, was mental, first... it was Mental Health Awareness Week last week, which I will mention when you finish this. Um, yeah, you've put me in a bad spot again. Go on, carry on. <laughs> listen. To these, that's Gareth Townsend. Next is a young man who made his Surrey first class debut back in 2017. These stats, everybody 38 first class matches already, 2,852 first class runs at an average of 60.68. He is, of course, Ollie Pope. Pope, how are you, my friend? Very well, Chachi. Good to be here. Good to see you again this Sunday morning. But now, nah, all good, all good. Can't complain. Good, my friend. Next is an off spinner who made his first class debut for Surrey back in 2017. His stats 23 first class matches, 69 wickets already, with a best of eight for 61. He is, of course, Amar Verdi. And, Verds, how are you this morning? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, very good indeed. Thanks. Uh, I'll ask you how your week's been in a minute, but. Um, those stats, you must be quite pleased with those already. Yeah, they're not too bad. Uh, I mean, there's always room for improvement. Could be better. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully uh, you know, we can improve those going forward. Yeah, and, and well, I was actually asking about, I was asking you your opinion on Gareth Townsend's stats. So let me just remind oh, you. Just, on, well, four, 400 just wickets that. at 20 is not bad, is it? Yeah, just before, have you got Verdi's batting stats? We, I thought we were doing batting and bowling. Oh, Orlando, we saw that last week yeah. with his hundred at um, as night watchman. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We, we. Yeah, Bird, I'm going to come back to you to get some sense here because Townsend can bang on all he wants about being a bowler, but Townsend stats an average of twenty point two seven in first class cricket. Your thoughts on those? I mean. From what I've heard from a lot of uh, ex-pros is that it was a really hard time playing at uh, at Taunton. So green wickets, you know, twenty. I heard uh, that he, he was top. He was he has top of the averages for three years. So I mean, he's done pretty well, hasn't he? <laughs> well done, Virg. You've done your research. Just top draw, top draw. <laughs> Speaking of Steve, Steve Waugh and people like that, yeah, you got your research back. Well done, McGill. Well done. McGill. Yeah, McGill. And finally, let's me and Jimmy Cook scored about got twenty eight hundreds between us in three years opening the batting. Me and Jimmy Cook. Yeah, Remember, can I be, he got twenty eight of them, mind you. Can I be honest? I really wish I hadn't mentioned them now. I really, it's literally. Already, we're only two minutes into this podcast, and you've already taken it over with your your, your average of twenty point seven. Let's get to our final guest, GT. Put yourself on mute. Let's get to our final guest who made his first class debut for Surrey back in 2015. These stats already from this young man. 67 first class matches with the bat, 2,602 runs at an average of 28.28 and already 183 first class wickets. Five, five first. He is, of course, Sam Curran. Sammy, how are you, my friend? Good, thanks, Churchy. Um... Yeah, just lovely day here in the sunshine, just chilling out. What are you up to? Well, I'm sitting here looking at you. You see, I can see you all through the magic of technology for this podcast. I can see, and I'm still trying to get my head round how you are sitting at Stamford Bridge. Now, you, you, you've told me that that's actually your wall, but I'm still trying to get my head round how you've got that 
the perfect picture of Stamford Bridge on your wall? Well, I don't know how many Zoom calls you've done, Churchill. I know, having watched your videos of your garden cricket, I'm not sure about your... You should. I'm surprised you don't know because there's a, a thing you can use on Zoom and it just makes me feel like I'm at the bridge watching Chelsea, maybe sitting in Frank Lampard's seat right now. So, yeah, it's a bit of fun and I can't wait to see yours soon. Well, actually, then that's a challenge for everybody for next week. Um, I can't wait to see what GT's going to have, but we've all got to have for the podcast next week a background. Sam's already got Stamford Bridge, Hopi, Birds, GT, and myself. We have to get our background ready for next week. So, um, GT, let me come to you first. Um, since we last spoke, how's your week been? Yeah, it's been pretty full on. Um, uh, we focused in terms of our kind of social media stuff with the Academy on mental health awareness week, which we take pretty seriously and value a lot um, and always have done on our Academy program in terms of how we uh, work through it. Um, yeah, and I've, I've just, we've just, we need to just kind of keep pushing that as well because even though it's a week where people focus on it, obviously the issues surrounding it is something that's, um, you know, all year round. And it's just something I think that sits with all of us in terms of having an understanding and appreciation of, of those things, especially in lockdown and the way, way people have, have been. So um, we focused on that. Um, been involved with kind of discussions with some coaches, Graham Thorpe, about getting up to the Oval or um, throwing some balls at these some of these guys and others for the return of the international players. So that takes place. So I'll get involved with that, with the claw. They'll, they'll, they'll be practicing my 65 mile an hour medium paces, which they'll get used to facing the West Indies against. And then um, what else are we doing? We're also trying to get um, a return to pl coaching for our young players as well, our under 16s, using um, some facilities around the county. So we've worked hard to get that set up, ready to go and press the button when we're um, all sorted so we can get our young county age group cricketers back, um, getting some one to one training, which will be, um, which will be brilliant. Yeah, and I'm going to ask the three boys about this as well. But um, obviously, this week announced that that Michael De Benito won't be won't be back with Surrey for when we get started again next summer, and even if we get domestic cricket this summer. Just just a word from you on Diver and, and what he's achieved during his time at Surrey. Yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously a disappointment for him and and everyone at the club to for it to end like that, with especially with the lockdown and lack of opportunity for this summer to do do the stuff we wanted to do um, but you're judged on you know a coach is criticized if you don't do well and sometimes not applauded when they do do well and you've got to remember we won a county championship in, a, in brilliant fashion we got two lords finals um, and we've created a squad of players um, that sets us well for the future so you know he's, he's he'd be disappointed he couldn't continue that but we have to kind of you know, wish him well and um, appreciate and congratulate him on the, on the stuff that he's done. And um, as a bloke, he, you know, he's a, a great bloke in terms of what he offers. And um, yeah, I think everyone's a, you know disappointed for that. But as with all things in professional sport, we'll move on and kind of look forward. Bobby, um, how's your week been? Well, what can you tell us about sort of getting back and having a hit? Because obviously. The 55 have been named. You, of course, are in that. Um, what, what can you tell us about when you're, you're going to get out there and start hitting the cricket ball again? Yeah, I think uh, the plan the plan is to start start getting back to training tomorrow. Um, I think I'm due to be at the over at 11 o'clock around that sort of time, and I, I'm pretty excited for it. To be honest, it's um it's been a, it's been obviously a long time without picking up a bat, and I think the first few hits there could be some stumps flying everywhere. I might be a bit rusty, but now nah, I'm really excited to get going again. Yeah, yeah. Does it feel a bit like they always talk about before the, the start of the season? It's like Christmas Eve. Does it feel a bit like that at the moment? Christmas Eve and getting back out? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, obviously these lads have been back bowling now, and I've seen some a bit on social media of the lads at the Oval and this. Yeah, you get, I've got a bit of FOMO. I got a bit jealous over the last sort of week or so. But now nah, it is. It's really exciting, and yeah, it's going to be nice just to get back to to that routine again. And a word from you on on Diva. Yeah, like like GT said, really, he's obviously coaches can sort of go unspoken about when things go very well and when things don't go as well. The fingers start sort of 
getting pointed. Um, but it's obviously a massive shame with how it's happened. But I'm sure um, I'm sure we'll be able to sort of uh, well we we end up going overseas quite a bit, and the lads sort of we I'm sure we'll be able to give them a good send off at some point. But yeah, no, it's obviously a massive shame and. Um, it's obviously a loss, but yeah, I'm sure he'll um, he'll be all good, and uh, it'll be nice to catch up with him at some point down under. And Verds, for you, how's how's your week been? Uh, congratulations in that 55. Very excited for you with that. Uh, are you out there bowling already, or uh, what, what's your program looking like? Um, <clears throat> so I was in this week to do some bowling, uh, and then just some work with Daz Vanessa. I think from next week now, I think the governmental guidelines or whatever you want to call them have, have changed slightly. So I think the training's now going to be a bit different. So I think, again, same as Popey, we're in tomorrow uh, training, which should be good. And now I think we're getting back into the flow of things. Seem, things seem to be on the way up. And, and how good has it been to, to be out? I know, I know you said last week you got a net in the garden, but how good has it been to, to actually been, been out there doing a bit of proper work again? Um, I mean, it's been it's been really good, obviously, with the uh, Jono at the club and stuff like that. It's good to get some chance for some one-on-one -on -one work uh, and kind of just honing in your skills. Now having an idea that you know could be potentially playing soon, so you know just keeping an eye on that gives you something a bit more to work towards now. So, which is good. And a word from you on Tiver. Um, I mean, very similar to what GT and Bobby said, but uh, you know, I thought Diva was really good, especially for us youngsters. You know, he gave us a lot of confidence, especially me. I think I learned a lot of good lessons while he was in charge, and um, you know, I want to wish him all the best for the future. Uh, I really enjoyed my time playing under him, so you know, hopefully, our paths cross soon. But uh, no, he'll be he'll be successful wherever he goes now, I reckon. And Sammy, when we spoke to you last week, you'd already been out there with the Fizz, having a bit of a bowl. Um, how's this week been and, and, and sort of what's on the cards cards for next week for you? Yeah, it's been good. It's um, I'm now three times a week and so bowling quite a good set of overs each day, building up intensity is probably getting close to 100%, which is which is good. Um, but yeah, it's been nice to get back into a routine and I'm enjoying the, the drive back into the ground and small things like that, bringing back the memories of it actually feeling like summer. So it's always good. And it's, I'm having, as Bird said, it's been, I haven't had a break of bowling for this long. And um, now this is almost like a little block to get work on some technical stuff, whereas you can't really work on it when you're playing so many games and stuff like that. So it's um, nice. And yeah, I think the batters are back in this week. And I know, I don't know if we're bowling at them this week, but I think maybe next week we start bowling against a, a batter again. So hopefully it gets that competitive edge going and really excited to catch up with Popey, Burnsy and see a few folks, see a few familiar faces. Brilliant. And, and also just a, a word from, from you about, about Div and what he achieved at the club. Yeah, I just kind of echo the other boys. Um, he obviously... It, we did. He did some great work for the first few years to us winning the championship. He gave a lot of a lot of youngsters opportunities, and now the youngsters are actually starting to thrive in the squad, which is um, really nice. And as we're linking back to last week, there's that picture of us all from the academy playing, and it would, he was probably the one who started getting rid of the older players and started picking us youngsters. You see, they're probably good stats actually in terms of. How many of the academy boys made debuts around him? Diver loved um, giving the youngsters a go. And um, yeah, he was obviously, it's no, never nice to see anyone go, but uh, I think whatever Diver moves on to do, he'll, he'll always be there for us. And I've already spoken to him recently since he left. And um, I'm sure we'll cross paths in the future. Just for everybody listening on the podcast, Sam Curran's changed his background again now. He's an absolute whiz at this background thing. So, so now you're sitting in. You're now sitting in front of the Surrey team celebrating a wicket in the in the one day stuff. How, the, oh, I told you, mate, Churchy. I'll, I'll give you a text after this, and I'll Facetime you. We'll, we'll, I'll teach you. God, boy, I need to know these things. Right, GT. We're talking about the the move into the first eleven this week from the academy. Um, give us an idea of how it works then. So, so you've got a player there that the the first team coach has got an eye on. Um, sort of what's the communication between you and and them about when when this kid should get in and have a game and and, and 
you know, that, that process of getting someone into play for the first 11? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty fluid and straightforward. I mean, obviously, I can manage them through that initial stage, which we chatted about last week, age group cricket into their academy programmes. You begin to look at which players are showing the temperament, character, skills that will allow them to push on. Um, that gives me the confidence to, in decisions to push them into second eleven cricket. And then at that point, that's when they're kind of being pushed into the... Um, Kind of the, the the frame of where the the pro coaches are, whether it was Diver or Alec, um, etc., where they're beginning to see those players a name to a face, have an understanding of who they are, um, and then they, you know, from what they see and what information we can give, and it's not all statistics; it's more to do with what they show. They will they will then make some decisions. I mean, an example maybe with Sam and Popey, that 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 transition happened really quickly because. Um, I said last week, Popey scored that great 100 in a semi-final at Reeds and in age of cricket. And within a year, he was playing in the first team in the semi-final of the Royal London. Now that came really, and Popey will know this, that came really from a, a net session he had that summer where he displayed the kind of abilities and skill sets they were looking for to, to plug a kind of hole in that 5-6-7 in, in, the, in the first team. And he went straight into that game against Yorkshire on the back of in a way what they knew about him coming up and then almost visually seeing the evidence in a practice environment and they and they got him straight up to to heading it and he um and, and I like I did mention there and Sam mentioned it but Diver, you know what they have done and go back to that is the ability to give younger players a shot and an opportunity not a gamble more more a case of backing them it's been pretty phenomenal and also has been a key reason why we've produced players that are now progressing on. And I think, you know, Sam and Ollie have benefited hugely from getting into the first team very quickly. Um, I sometimes think it's not stagnating, but if you stay in the second team too long, you can get into not bad habits, but you're not stretched enough. There's a massive gap between the first sound of the first team cricket and second team cricket. And the quicker these guys can kind of travel through that and get into the first team, and beyond, I think, is a massive plus. And I think we've done that brilliantly with most of these, these, two, these guys here. And they've, um, they've obviously been good enough and have shown character and ability, but they've they benefited from not kind of stagnating in elements of cricket that may not push them forward quick enough. Um, um, and Sam, Sam, in a similar way, when he came up for, a, he mentioned it last week, came up for a... Um, a 2020 practice one summer who's still at school they knew about him as a, as a person in terms of you know description but they'd never seen him and then he, he played really well in that game and they went from there and they were there you know, he was playing as a schoolboy in front of 20 30 000. um so yeah it's a fluid but i said fluid process um not complicated and certainly not complicated when players have abundance of talent and and like I said, the ability to handle what you're giving them. And, and if that, those ingredients are there, they can fly quite quickly and, and progress amazingly. And I think uh, these guys are special examples of that, but it doesn't happen always like that. Yeah, I suppose the other thing there is if you don't give them a go, you're never going to really find out, are you? At some point, you've got to give them a go to find out whether they've got it or not. Yeah, and that is the key. And I, I'm a big one that a player adapts to the environment or, or level that they're at. If you put a lad into a test environment or a first-class game or a second-team game, they, they sense what they're in, they work it out, the better ones do, and they adapt and then they take their games forward. Once they're comfortable in that environment, once they feel happy and I say secure, they kind of don't feel inhibited or, or wor over-worried then that player can, can grow and progress in that environment. I think that's, what, that's what's happened. The, the longer you leave it, I think, the more those players can potentially bring up negativity, uncertainty, anxiety over whether they're good enough. Will, will it happen for me? So in a way, the quicker you can get them in and back them, the better results you're going to get and the more you're going to get out of them. Popey, um, so GT mentioned a the net there, and I can remember you being named in the squad for that semi up at uh, Headingley. Uh, what, what are your memories of that? Because the other thing I remember with us all sitting at Edgbaston after, after a game in the hotel and you were playing for the 19s, England 19, and got 100, 
and everyone's sitting there and everyone nodding. Um, and so what are your memories though of that net to go into that semi-final? Um, it was all, it was bizarre. Also, I ran myself out on, I think, 87. Didn't make the 100. Um, oh, sorry, 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 Uh No, it, it was bizarre. It was uh, that sort of, that, that 10 day period is what sort of got me into that first team so quickly. I was lucky enough to, I was, there's a lot of things that I was lucky about. And like, for example, I was lucky with the one game in that one day series we were playing against Sri Lanka under 19. The only game that I scored runs in happened to be a TV game. Mm. Uh, I was lucky that Diva, Diva and Stewie and the rest of the boys happened to be watching at the time. Because then after well, that, yeah. I basically... <laughs> just sorry, just to interrupt there, but, but I can honestly remember everyone sitting in the bar watching it. And, and, you know, I'd heard about you, but I'll be honest, that was the first time I'd seen you back. And, and I'm not just trying to big you up here, but literally the entire squad was sat there watching you back in that, that game and, and everyone was going, whoa, hang on. So as you say, there, there, there's a bit, not, not luck, but timing, everything, isn't it? And as you say, yeah. that was televised and everyone saw it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And then, um, I don't know, I remember just getting called up from... Uh, from Stewie and he, he just said um, do I want to come in for a, for a hit in a training session and I think Sam was already in the first team then so, but other than that I didn't, I didn't really know many of the boys that well um, so it was all a bit bizarre and I remember I think Barnsley was flicking at me uh, he's pretty quick on the sidearm um, and to be honest I, just, I, just, I, was, I, was, I had a lot of confidence from the week before and scoring the runs and I just remember having one of those nets where I'd just play some random shots and I'd be lucky enough that they sort of, they came off and and then I think the coach liked what he saw at the time. So he just gave me a game, I think the week after, which was, um, yeah, it was, it was a weird week. It was very strange. But when I remember when I first got a call from Stewie and he was like, we're going to register you. So if we decide that you're going to play in the first team, I was like, I thought, I thought I couldn't be further away from the first team if I was being completely honest. So, um, and that was before I had a contract or anything. So, uh, yeah, it was bizarre. It was a bizarre 10 days. Um, but yeah, timing, timing was everything, like you said. Yeah, and what do you remember of that semi-final? I remember you coming in. Sanger got 100, didn't he? Batted out of his skin as usual. And then, and then you came oh, no, in. No, he didn't. He actually didn't. No, uh, Davo. Davo got 100. Steve Davis. Oh, that, um, Sanger. Yeah. That, yeah no, actually, um, come on, Church. Do your research. Yeah, yeah sorry. Of Sanger's 100th 100. 100 in the one day game. Yeah, Sanger went, Sanger went early. Davo, you're right, got runs, but then you came in at the back end, didn't you? And 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 was yeah. it were, were you relaxed? Were you nervous? How did it feel? Because it had all happened so quickly. Um I think I was probably more nervous in the field than I was batting. Uh it was it was the ideal situation I wanted to come in at. I only got twenty I think, but I was happy just with the twenty runs and uh, I was taking them. I just wanted to get off the mark and um I think it was probably more nervous in the field. Obviously, being when you when you're coming in as a youngster, you feel that kind of pressure in the field. So that was probably the biggest thing for me. You don't want to you don't want to mess up the uh, sort of in front of your teammates. But yeah, no, it was it was. I don't just remember the bus back and we had a few beers. Obviously, we won the match, so we were celebrating. And it was just I think I was sat next to Sam actually on the way back, and yeah, we had a, we had a few beers and we were every it was it was yeah it was really surreal and sat next to these guys that we'd sort of watched as youngsters so that was my first taste of it and yeah it was awesome was, uh, you two were both 18 yeah we were yeah yeah Not and, and what, it's like, it's like a, a bit like a throwback to the academy then <laughs> <laughs> in a way Popey, in a way was it good for you that it all happened quickly and that you didn't have a huge amount of time to dwell on the fact that, blimey, you know, I, I'm playing in a semi-final here of the big one-day competition. And this has all happened, you know, really, really quick. Probably, yeah, I think so. I, I remember I didn't really even know the morning of the game if I was going to be playing or not. I was trying to sort of work it out myself. And then when I got told, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. I think for the first time, whenever you're making your debut, whether it's for Surrey or for England or England Lions or just a new side you're, you're going to have nerves and you want it to just sort of you want to get that first game out of the way so you can sort of ease into it get that first performance under the belt um but yeah probably at the time probably because i was so young and it was, i was new so new to it all it was probably for the best that it just suddenly suddenly sort of happened like that 
Birds, um, your your first class debut for Surrey was Essex at Chelmsford. Um, just just what are your memories of that as well? What what are your memories of getting the nod and being told, yeah, you're playing, and, and obviously you picked up wickets. So I think Foster was James Foster was your, your first wicket, I think, from memory. Um, but but yeah. what, what what are your memories of that? Do you know talking there with Popey about? It was all very quick for him. Obviously, you've been around the, the squad a bit. And and what, what are your memories of making that debut? Um, I mean, it was... Uh, I remember that. Game. Yeah, so basically what happened was is that um, I think Bats was injured or he had, a, he had an injury. I think it was his toe or something like that. And uh, so I came up as a replacement in the squad, like kind of as just in case he didn't play. So I didn't really think that I was going to gonna play that game. But then kind of on the day before, then they told me that I'm playing. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was interesting because I didn't, really, uh, I didn't really know what to expect too much because obviously I'd been playing twos cricket under GT and stuff like that. But obviously, until you don't play a first-team game, I think you don't really know maybe what it's, what it's really about. And um, I think I bowled 37 overs or something in that game. And we, I only bowled one innings. We only bowled one innings. I think Sanga nearly got the record there of the, the hun- most yeah. hundreds in a row. And he got 90-something or 80-something got caught and bowled by uh, Wesley. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a really interesting experience because like, I bowled 23, 24 overs and I only went about 40 or 50 runs. And I thought, I haven't got a wicket here. Like, I really want to get a wicket. And then, kind of in the next, it just kind of went really quickly from there. And obviously, everyone kind of knows me then for my kind of celebration running to third man or something after I got my first wicket. But, uh, but yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah, it was interesting. And it, I'm fascinated by that. What, 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 what were the differences then? Because as you said, you've been playing second team cricket. You went, you went up there thinking you might not play with bats being injured. So you're just in there as a sort of cover and then you are playing. So, so what were the, what were the differences that you found straight away playing, playing first team? I think the intensity definitely is like, it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more on it. Like everyone's on it hundred percent all the time. There's no room to kind of let people slip. And especially like the, the batters, they, they're not, they don't want to give you their wicket. Uh, and you know, they, they just want to keep running you into the ground as much as possible. Also the wickets are slightly different. You know, sometimes you might be playing at club grounds in, in, in second level cricket. So the pitches are a bit different. So, you know the way the pitch changes over the over the days, and you know the whole the whole environment was completely different. Obviously, when you got people like you know Sangakara fielding at mid on, and you've got some other big names playing in the games, it's kind of a bit of a. I think Alistair Cook played that game as well, and it was kind of a bit surreal that you know all these people are playing when last week you were playing, you know, against somebody else. So it's quite it, you kind of got to look past that and kind of see that, okay, right, I'm here to do my job and, you know, I want to show people what I can do. Um, look, you bowled really well in that, that first game against them. How much, how much confidence did that give you? To, you know, because you go into a game and, and if you can do what you did and bowl well, you know you can do it at that level. So, so how much confidence did that give you? I mean, it did give me a lot of confidence. There was a bit in the pitch as well which helped. Um, it was quite dry. Um, but it, it did give you a lot of confidence, but I think also, you know, it, it made it seem that, you know, it's actually not that daunting. It's not maybe, you know, you can do it. But I think the next game I had actually after that was against Hampshire, which was a few games after. I didn't actually play the next game. There was a break, but uh, Bats played the next game. Then I played against Hampshire. And that was a real eye opener for me because I think I bowled like uh, 40 overs and went for quite a lot of runs. I only got one wicket. And I think that that kind of showed me that. Actually, it's not always going to be like this. There's going to be some tough days where the pitches aren't going to offer, or, or you know, the in you know, the conditions aren't going to be in your favour. So you need to find a way of what you can do. So that was a, for me, that was an even bigger learning experience about how I need to go about now as a bowler. That one thing doesn't work all the time. So you've got to think about how you adjust and work on things to be the most successful possible. And Sammy, what what are your memories of sort of making first team? First team debuts, because well, as GT was saying, still at school um, and coming into that first team. What what are your memories of all of that? Because that was all quite a whirlwind as well, wasn't it? 
Yeah, I think um, that game we spoke about earlier, my first kind of like warm-up game with the first team, I kind of just came in, did my best, did quite well. And then same as Popey, Stewie gave me a ring and said, we're going to register you. And I was like, oh, I can't. Like, I was so shocked almost, just kind of like, oh, this is amazing. What number do you want on your shirt? So I had to call my mum, my brothers, saying, what shirt number should I get? Things like that was pretty cool. Um, but any time you got a number, it was quite interesting. When we played academy stuff, any player who had a, a number on their shirt or something, everyone was like, oh, my God, this guy's like the player. <laughs> so it's... Um, <laughs> but my um, my first memories, I played a T20 against Kent at, at the Oval was my, my first team debut. And then... I can't actually really remember how, how well it... I only remember my first class debut the best. I was against Kent. I got... I just... I got the new ball and um, I, I just started bowling, trying to bowl as quick as I can. Just in a moment, I actually went for a lot of runs. I ended up picking five first. So, um, I was buzzing, but I didn't realise I was probably going at six and over. So, I didn't realise like <laughs> their um, extent of kind of how you got to maintain runs and all this kind of stuff. So, yeah, that's probably my earliest memory. and then. It was just great to be playing, and um, yeah. Well, j- just that that Kent game in 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 the championship. Yeah, he's now your England teammate. But I remember you knocking Joe Denley over very early. I think it was you. Was it your first? Yeah, he's my. Yeah, uh, so yeah. That, I reckon it was like, like the third or fourth ball. He was my first wicket. So I I do even now give him a bit of stick, just saying I let you out out my pocket now and again. <laughs> But it was an absolute hurler as well that knocked him over. So that, that, look, be honest, that must have done your confidence, the power of good, to knock over someone like Joe Denley with that delivery in your first over must have, must have done you the power of good. Yeah, I think, as Popey said, once you, I think bowling is probably similar to batting in that aspect. When it's your debut, you just want to get that first run, get that first wicket or get that first kind of over out the way. But once you get one wicket, you almost get that belief and um, like realization that you can actually play at this level, and then yeah, it just went from there. And um, yeah, it's it's great memories. It's just at that time, I don't think I was thinking too much. It was kind of, oh my god, I'm playing a sport I love with my mates, and I just went with it. Whereas I think as I've got a bit older, I've started to probably look at my game a bit more and fine tune it. Whereas there, you're just trying to play to have a bit of fun and um, just trying to do your best. And, and how good was it getting there, Churchy? Just sorry, but an interesting thing which we kind of not irritated us a little bit is when Sam did make that debut against Ken the Champo. I think he batted at 11. Um, yeah. And we I, I was quite, I mean, you talk about communication. I was quite frustrated that they didn't appreciate or work out quickly there that he should have been, but he wasn't a number 11 because he was batting for us as a, a four, five, six. And could bat and bowl, but he got he obviously got the new ball because he could swing it. But I think they might have got his batting position slightly wrong in his in his early days. I don't know how long it took him to get away from that number eleven spot. There might have been a game or two, but um, that was quite ironic, really, that he started in coming at eleven. I was more I was more I was more angry that I was batting behind TC because I definitely was better better than him. Sammy, <laughs> 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 we talked about. Um, Diver earlier, but obviously G Ford as well. He was very good at getting, to, you know, Tom with Tom. That that, that was G Ford who, who got Tom involved. Um, he was very yeah. good with the the youngsters as well, wasn't he? Yeah, exactly. So obviously, I my first first season was with Fordy, and um, he was pretty the same sort of thing. I think at that stage when I de- debuted, it was quite. Um, there was a lot of older players, kind of coming to the end of their careers like that obviously there was Trim I came in for Trim actually when Trim got injured um, and I know Vic, Vic was still around um, so I was one of the the first kind of of our us three in this chat of coming on and Fordy was very oh let's give this guy a go just go out, your, go out there and play your game we're not going to judge you straight away and I think that started the cycle of when Fordy left um, then obviously Diva came in and then Diva just picked up on from Fordy Kind of went with it, yeah. And G G T, how how you know mentioning Graham Ford there, how how good was that for you as well to see you know your lads getting a go in the first team? Oh, it was brilliant, and because it hadn't you know it wasn't a regular thing during my time at Surrey, which you know has gone on for a while now in my twenty fifth, twenty sixth year. Um, I. Th- 
it's it's a really interesting area to look at about the progression of young players into in the sense of into professional sport and beyond. I think there there's no formula to it because you know, these you know, Popey and Sam are quite unique in a way. That's not that's not the standard progress. There isn't there isn't in a way a standard way of getting into it. It's just the kind of you know it's a little bit. You react. You go in. You do well, you go forward or you go back a bit. And then it's, it is down to the players. It's their, their ability, and I keep going back to them, the ability they've got and the pe people they are and how they're made up is how far they're going to progress. And it's very difficult to assess that. Any coach, selector can't really always get it right. Um, and you're always, I think, if you've got an attitude of wanting younger, I would rather see a younger player get the opportunity to get better than potentially an older player hold a level and maybe not progress and I think that's the attitude if you there is so many you know, Sibbers made his um got his double hundred very early for against Yorkshire um still at school I think I'm, I'm you know amazing achievement so I've always come from the camp that you know you obviously in the nature of the work I do is you've got to get these lads in there give them the opportunity to play back them and you will see them you know so it sounds kind of you know you will literally see them grow and develop in front of your eyes and I think they have done that, and the younger players that have come through. Smithy made his debut at Lords in the twenty, no, at the Oval in the twenty twenty game. Well, he might have been at Lords actually. Jason Roy did. Um, Jacksy's come in early. You've got to get them in and back them. And I think there is an understanding now that the the kids coming out of our program, they're good players. Um, and the mm. difference isn't as big as probably what people have said before between going from schoolboy age group second team into into international cricket if they're good enough they do it and that's a, that's kind of that's a natural way it will happen so it's all credit to them but I think we've got it right that we are giving young players the chance also it's better for the club because you build up a spine of or a cohort of players that have played together know each other love the badge are about sorry and whether they go to England or not that stays with them forever I think Popey, we talked about that that mad week and then getting in the one day stuff for the semi final at Hedley. Um, what are your memories of sort of first your first class debut was against Oxford Uni, wasn't it? Off the top of my head, from memory, and you kept wicket, and I think you got, got in the first innings. But 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 what are your memories of sort of breaking into the championship side as well, and and then that hundred against Hampshire, Hampshire down at the Aegeus Bowl. Um, yeah, I made my, so obviously the first class debut against Oxford and then that, uh, then my championship debut was at Middlesex against, uh, oh, sorry, at the Oval against Middlesex. And it was, yeah, yeah. it was uh, quite, quite similar to before. It all happened quite quickly. And if I'm honest, it actually happened, it was quite soon after the Lords final when I happened to drop Hales on about nine and he went on and got about 170 odd not out and played a pretty good knock to lift the trophy. So I was obviously... Because at the time, I hadn't played a lot at all. So I was obviously a bit flat about that. And I hadn't played a lot for Surrey. And I, was, I think I was maybe 19 or 18. So, it was, mm. so my, I was actually in a bit of a funny place sort of from a cricket point of view. In my mind, that's probably the flattest I've been about it. Um, so, and, I, and don't get me wrong, I, I wanted to obviously get in the side. But at the same time, I was like, oh, I don't want to don't drop another catch and do all this. Um, so it's... And then that, that championship debut came a lot sooner than I expected. I think we sat down and had a team meeting um, and then it was sort of hinted that me and Ryan Patel might play. Um, and we sat down and said, like, what, what would it mean if we were to make our debuts and sort of get that brown hat? Um, and then, yeah, we went on and it was actually that bone arrow game where someone fired a bone arrow on the, onto the middle of the pitch and, yeah, it just landed, landed yeah. Um, <laughs> So that's another good memory of it. It cut us short of just winning that game, I think. But yeah, no, it was it was a pretty mad week. And again, it might, just, be, just, might be in the end of his career that game. Yeah, yeah well, could you, have been first to be fair, because you were just on that that you were were you were short leg, or you were pretty near where it landed, weren't you? Yeah, I was. The video is quite funny actually. Looking back, I was a short leg, and it landed like sort of in the middle, in the middle of the pitch, pretty much, and. Um, yeah, it's quite funny to see. I saw Ricky Clark running off, covering his head, and some boys were just strolling off. And like, if you're gonna if you're gonna get hit by an arrow from outside the ground, then luck's against you that day. It's not meant to be. 
Yeah, well, welcome, welcome to Championship Cricket, Ollie. Yeah, right? exactly, um, exactly. You say it all happened pretty quickly. Again, and, and, and as you say, you, you were in an interesting place at that point. But, but again, because it all happened quite quickly and because suddenly you were playing against Middlesex at the Oval, was it again, was that a good thing again? Because you didn't have a huge amount of time to think about it. Yeah, I think, I think so. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I don't think it's ever a bad thing because if you, I don't mind just sort of, it's the same with the England stuff. These things happen, they, they feel like they happen really suddenly. And then I remember even being with Sam when he made his um, test debut, he got a call up. And he, he probably wasn't expecting it. It was probably the last thing he was expecting at the time. We were on the golf course. And then suddenly he's getting told to drive up to, I think, Leeds or Headingley. Um, and he's got his, got his whites on suddenly the next day and he's making his debut. So it, those, it's, these things do happen quickly, but that's the way it is. And I don't think it's a bad thing at all because, yeah, it just probably helps you go into that game like you would any other game. You try to prepare the same, whether it's for Surrey or England or, yeah, whoever's, whoever's playing. And, um, but yeah, I think I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's yeah, probably quite a good thing. Then you can sort of just jump in head first. And and that that first hundred as well in 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 Championship cricket, a GS bowl. Uh, it had rained, hadn't it? Going into the last day. Look, I I, could, I actually can remember seeing you at breakfast that morning, and you batted with Folksy and made that hundred. How how big a thing was that? Because that was early in your career to tick that one off early as well. Yeah, I think it was. Um, you want to just tick off that that milestone. Obviously, that it felt a bit. It was a bit of a strange feeling. You sort of imagine your first hundred big celebrations and all that kind of thing. But it, it was a bit of a. We don't. We me and just sort of folks here myself had done all the hard work and we were batting out for the draw, batting the day out for the draw. And um, the new second new ball came on, and luckily I just found the rope a few times and suddenly looked at the scoreboard and I was nearly there. And then I hit, as I hit that hundred, we shook hands. Um, so it, it was a bit of a strange feeling, but it was really nice. I remember the drive home, just sort of knowing knowing that you can do it at that level against a pretty solid attack was um, was a yeah, it was a good feeling. Verds, I'll ask the other two about this as well. And obviously for you, a big thing for you, 2018 Verds winning the championship, took all your wickets that season. Massive part of massive part of that. Um, which is amazing to think, really, isn't it? Uh, the year after you made your debut. So, so again, for you as a sort of career progression to get that backing and to be, to be the spinner in that side that, that won the championship must have been a huge thing. Definitely. I think you... You, you know, at also that time, uh, the team was... Uh, was moulded quite quite strong. We had quite a lot of youngsters in the team, so that was something to like. You look around, and a few of your mates are playing at the same team they were growing up playing with, and it kind of felt like you know your county age group stuff, where you know we used to win a lot of our games, and uh, it felt quite similar. It was quite surreal actually because we used to like we used to turn up against some pretty decent sides and just roll them over, and you know you would see Popey getting a hundred, or you know we'd post four hundred plus most games, or you know, and it was just like crazy. Like I remember one game at. Somerset, no, not at Somerset. Sorry, at Guildford. I mean, obviously Ryan took six for in that game, or world's quickest five for whatever the record is. And you know, like they had a pretty decent, decent. Oh, I've lost you there again, oh, birds. No. no, no, don't worry. Well, I'll cut. I'll try again in a sec, birds. I'll try again in a sec. Sammy, um, just, just your, your memories. Of 2018 because obviously you were off playing for England a bit as well but but to sort of win the championship early in your career with your mates must have been something pretty special I'd have thought. Yeah I think um, the boys nailed it it was obviously a um, huge milestone for all of us but I think it hit me the most I don't know it might be the same for the other guys but seeing the older players how they've kind of felt after winning like you look at like Jade, Bats, Burnsy, Jay Roy even TC, the way they um, almost quite emotional at it. I think that was quite a quite a big thing. That obviously we hadn't won it in 16 years, and um, I actually I got on the I didn't play that last game where we won it at Worcester, but I I got on the train. And I just felt I couldn't miss that moment of. You know, I took the risk that we we're going to beat Worcester that afternoon, but when I arrived, we lost a couple of couple of wickets in the afternoon, and um, 
no one better than Mornay just to clip one off his hip um, for four. So I think those are the moments I look back at and just I'm almost getting goosebumps now thinking about it. It's, um, it's a great, great memories. And to say we've won a championship pretty early in our careers is pretty cool. And I think that gives us a taste of what it's like. And hopefully, I know probably this season, the championship's going to be different, whatever, what cricket we do play. But hopefully next year when it's, when it's normal, we can kind of forget about last season, which was probably not good enough from, from anyone in part of the side in terms of as team. So, yeah, I think it's, it's great memories. And, and am, am I right in thinking that that, that game at New Road, you, you, could, you got down there for the final day, but you almost didn't get in to, to, to see the end. Is, is that right? Yeah, well, everything started... Um, <laughs> they didn't actually want to let me into the ground when I arrived because I, got, I didn't have a ticket. I just thought I'd, I'd just walk in. I had to call Stewie to come speak to them at the gate because they won't give me a ticket. And then I managed to just get there in time and... I don't remember much of the bus journey back because we did we did have a big a big do. So yeah, it was it was great, a great fun, and I'm glad I didn't miss that moment of kind of celebrating there on the balcony at New Road. So yeah, it was awesome. And and how 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 much do you take a pleasure in seeing these other two go well? And you know we we talked about it last week, but you know in terms of Championship cricket with Verds with his wickets, Popey making his hundreds. It seems every every other day that Pope is making a hundred. How much pleasure do you take in seeing seeing your mates doing really really well? Yeah, well, I think it's um that's the biggest thing. I think when you when you're playing in a team sport and you you're winning games, it's fine. But when you with your when you're doing it with your mates and doing well, I was actually trying to find a virtual background of earlier of um of Verd celebrating his his aeroplane celebrations because those. Like memories like that when Verd spins one through the gate and he runs all the way around the oval when there's not many people in the crowd and going crazy. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. And um, obviously seeing Popey, the first memory now, obviously that's because it's recent, was seeing Popey get his Test hundred against South Africa in yeah. the Test match was was probably the the top pinnacle stuff because that's dreams are made of that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, it's awesome. Verd, I'll, I'll I'll ask you again. Because uh, we slightly yep. lost you the last you answered this question, but but for you being part of that and an integral part of that that side that won the championship in two thousand and eighteen, uh, only a year after you made well less than a year after you made your, your first class debut. Um, what, what are your memories of that? A getting the backing to be that spinner and B to win the championship as well. Yeah, I think, I mean, I started that season, uh, I think, again, Bats got injured, so I wasn't even supposed to start the season. Bats got injured, and, you know, next day, they're like, well, you're playing, and, you know, I looked at the Hampshire lineup, and I was like, oh, my God, they had Amla playing, they had Vince playing, they had, you know, they had a pretty, they, sorry, they had... So, play, but I just felt a bit like maybe I... I the... Uh, on uh, on maybe that I was going to play the next day. It was a bit all of a sudden again. So, you know, playing that year was, you know, it still, it still feels unreal because we used to turn up to games and, you know, we used to turn sides over in two or three days, like proper sides. And, um, you know, if it really felt a bit like we had a formula, it worked and, you know, we didn't need to change it. But I guess playing the following year was a bit different and it kind of put things into perspective for me that actually it's not always going to be as easy as this or it's not going to work the same thing all the time. So that was really interesting uh, for me. But again, some of the other boys I mentioned, like playing with your mates and winning a championship, which is, I think that is the pinnacle of playing county cricket is winning a championship, probably the hardest thing to do, um, is unbelievable. I mean... You know, not not, a man, not many people will be able to say that, you know, you played a championship year with, you know, three or four people that you've been playing with since young age. And a close team, so, you know, it, it makes hard work and effort that you put in worth it. But to win it at such a young age, I think you don't really maybe appreciate how much work actually goes into it. And Popey, um, look, 2018 wasn't a bad year for you because obviously you made your England debut as well. But we're going to talk about that in the next episode. Then. But um, what what are your memories of that winning the championship and and doing it as everybody said with your mates in the dressing room like sorry? Yeah, it was unbelievably special. Um, we 
obviously we just got we got on a run from on the pitch from that kind of point of view. We we got on a run where we were just sort of put on a big score and then just goal teams out for twice and twice in no time really. And it it was um, the amount of times we were in the situation where Burns would ask the boys, "Shall we um, should we follow, should we make them follow on or shall we have them put our feet up and have another bat or not?" And then the bowlers would all say, "Oh, let's have a little." Let's have a little bat for maybe at sort of a half a day or something, so they can get off their feet. And we'd always bowl again, and then the bowlers would just roll the side over again. And it, yeah, we just got on a roll, and it was awesome. But to do it with these boys, yeah, it was unbelievably special. And Sammy said it there; he alluded to it when he said um, how when you see how much it meant to the older guys, for example, Ricky, Jade, those guys who um, they've been around, they've been around for a while now. To see how emotional they it made them as well was. Uh, it makes you realise that um, it's a that massive part of their life and a massive part of the, the history of the club as well. And it's, it's great to be able to help those guys sort of create those memories as well. But yeah, it's, um, it was a pretty special summer. And obviously the, there's a lot of hard work that goes into a championship win. I don't think it's like winning, winning anything else. It's, you played 14 games in the season and it feel like a long slog. Sorry, my message popped up on my screen. Uh, it can feel like a long slog at the time, especially when you're sort of making sides follow on and you're doing some good time in, in the field. Um, but yeah, no, like I said, it was yeah unbelievably special. And to do it with these lads um, just makes it even better. Yeah, and Popey, final one for you. Um, cricket, though, is a funny old thing, isn't it? And it has actually tripped you up. And, and I would have thought what happened last summer with the injury... <laughs> The way you bounce back brilliantly from that, but it, this game keeps you pretty honest. Yeah, it does. Uh, it's good. I think it probably makes you a better person as well. In my eyes, you see some of the best sort of players in the world, and some of the some of the guys who we, we're lucky enough to get over to Surrey. Obviously, we've got Mornay at the moment. I've, I haven't really met Hashim yet, but apparently, he's the very similar Sangha. There's a reason those guys are sort of they were at the top of their game for so long and so well respected because they're also sort of good folks and I think they play hand in hand and it's just about trying to stay stay pretty level because one week you might score a hundred and you might be the next best thing or the best thing and then the next week you might have a rough week and you're suddenly overrated. So um especially with sort of the media these days as well, you've got to try and stay pretty constant, I reckon. Um and you, you learn that off the guys that we're lucky enough to share the changing room with at Surrey, uh, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a leveller. So yeah, it keeps you keeps you pretty honest at the best of times. Yeah, Sammy, final question for you uh, this week. You did, I touched on it there, mate, but in the wonderful world of social media, um, and if you play international cricket or even if you play Surrey, you know, there's a lot of people watching you. How much did it take to get used to that as well? Just just having a lot of people watching what you were up to. Yeah, I think um, Popey nailed it on the head there. I think it's um, it's fantastic when you're doing well and obviously getting wickets and everyone's saying great bowling, bowler, you're bowling well or scoring runs. But I think the main thing is trying to stay level because those days where I probably noticed it more in international cricket recently. I know you we meant talking about first team cricket, but I think everyone's your friend when you're doing well and I think it's about trying to maintain those moments where you're a bit lower and um, I think again links back to being with your mates just keep surrounding I just try to keep surrounding myself with good people and good people I trust and um, if you're getting the backing from people around you I think that's all you need to worry about because if you start worrying about um, everything around you I don't think you'll focus on the day job if that makes sense you've got to focus on your actual day in, day out, doing what you do well and don't need to worry about people's opinions too much, I think. Because I think all in, I probably nailed it. We've had so many pros who have come over to Surrey who, who, we, who we can question day in, day out what it's like. And they are literally the top top game. You look at like Graham Smith, Kumar, Amla, Ponting, all these guys who have come over to Surrey. They're literally the best in the game. So I think there's no one better to pick their brains. Whereas we had Sanger for three years. So he was... A true, a true gent and one of the world's greats. So I think we we were pretty lucky to pick the brains. And he just kind of, he had a great way of looking at it. He would always say that you just got to focus on your job and then everything takes care of itself. Because I think if you worry about other people's opinions, you might start thinking theirs are right and yours are wrong. So it's just trying to stay level. And GT, final, final, final one for this episode to you. So 
you're three here chatting away to me. You've had a few that have come through. You've got a few that are coming through now. For you sitting there and watching them do what they do, it must give you a, a massive boost, must give all your coaches on the academy a massive boost as well, I would have thought. Yeah, of course. I think it kind of gives confirmation and confidence of what you're doing and how you're doing it um, is, 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 a, is the right way or the right way for you because you've got results to prove it, I think. We've been fortunate in a way that we've had these lads come through together, but you know, part of that is the system. Um, but I, I will go back to the fact that it's, it's a reflection of them as individuals. They've, they've managed themselves and earned it. We've tried to guide them, give them a, a framework from which to win, uh, from which to develop through. But at the end of the day, you know, when that, they cross over that line, whether it was Surrey shirt or an England shirt, it's them who have to make the decisions, whether they're bat, bowling, fielding and execute. And I think um, you know, it, it goes back to, you know, my, my pride or, you know, in watching how they've developed and are developing. And I think their credits, I always say their credit to themselves as, and their families of what they represent. And we're fortunate too that they're, they're Surrey lads as well. So, you know, I take my hat off to them. Brilliant. Well, fellas, thank you for your time again. Um, have a good week. Uh, glad to see you back out there bowling, hitting again. Have a good week. Take care of yourselves. Look after yourselves and stay safe.